lights have all been sent. The Christmas rushes through. Do you guys know it? But I still have one wish to make. It's coming up. Just wait for a second. A special one for you. It's coming. Merry Christmas, darling. It's not the most popular Christmas song in the world. It's the Carpenters from the 70s. It's no big deal if you don't recognize it. It's actually no big deal at all. Anyway, I'm Erin Wathen at EW Wellness Solutions, and today we're going to talk about a day in my old life, which is the opening chapter of my book entitled, Why Can't I Stick to My Diet? And the reason I started the book with this chapter was because I wanted to walk the reader, or you, through what a day used to be like for me. Because until I was able to really connect the dots from what I was eating and how I was feeling, I didn't really understand what I was doing to myself. So let me just start at the beginning. So I used to just wake up and just feel like crud. Um, you know, I always had acne, like I was just tired. Um, I would weigh myself and be like, how did I gain weight? I, I never really understood like what I was going to weigh. It was sort of like disconnected almost from my body because I didn't see or understand like the cause and effect. And I would always sort of have this internal dialogue of like, am I going to be good today? Am I going to be bad today? Am I going to be good today? Am I going to be bad today? Because good meant this and bad meant this. There was never just living. Like now I just live. But anyway, and I remember just having tons of coffee with skim milk because you can't have fat, right? And then just pouring the NutraSweet or all the wrappers because, um, you know, Stevia was big or I can't remember what it was now. I love green packets. And just, you know, trying not to eat all day. And then I would finally just, like, give in and just sugar aroma. And then, like, I wouldn't want to eat dinner because then I felt like I blew it. And then I would end up eating a bunch of ice cream or whatever in the dark at, like, 10 o'clock. So I just was always like trying not to eat and then eating too much and then eating my kids, you know, grilled cheese leftovers. And it was just constant like food drama. I even like that's the subtitle of my book because it was like this white noise that was always going on in the back of my head. Like how many calories are in that? Like um, are those jeans going to fit me? Like how many pairs of the same <laughs> white jeans that I have in my closet? And the answer was like three different sizes because I was, my weight was always fluctuating and I was always just all over the place with like my health and my skin and like I just was so like my I, I it was just bad right and it wasn't until I was able to step back from it and realize I wasn't really ever full because I was never really eating any food yeah I might have like chicken on a salad with fat-free dressing but I was never really satiated because thing about like why would my blood sugar have been stabilized if all I was eating was lettuce and you know chicken without any fat and salad dressing full of sugar so like why would that have stabilized my blood sugar of course I was hungry a half an hour later it wasn't going to satisfy me so once I learned the science behind why I was so miserable <laughs> I was able to fix it and that's why I recommend to you guys that you get rid of as much as possible, if not all of your sugar, your flour, and your artificial sweetener. And flour people get kind of cranky about, especially because some reason people think it's a food group. First of all, food groups we made up, there are macronutrients. Just There's three. There's protein, carbs, and fat. Look in the back of a nutrition thing right there. Um, the whole food group concept is a USDA thing. So whenever people say don't get rid of an entire food group, that's like nonsense. You can, you do not need to have a bunch of, you know, Wonder Bread to keep growing and living and being a healthy person. You can have your carbohydrates from vegetables. You can have your carbohydrates from beans. You can have your carbohydrates from things other than Twinkies. <laughs> That's all the brainwashing we grew up with. So it is really possible to keep living your life without a bunch of starch. It is totally possible. 
but I didn't know that for a long time. And it took me until I got really fed up and realized I needed to understand what's going on in my brain. So I was able to really make a change. And I had to come to a place where I didn't really come at it from, I want to weigh X. Because when you say you want to weigh X, it doesn't really ever take. What I've learned and from watching my clients succeed is when they come at it from a health perspective, like I want to cut sugar because it's bad for me and I want to cut NutraSweet or Stevia or whatever because it messes with my brain, their weight has to follow. The weight has no choice. Your body fat has no choice. So it's sort of an interesting way that we, if we reframe it, our body will do exactly what we want it to, to do and what we always want it to do. So when we put our health in front of our weight, that's where the magic lives. Hope this helps. Um, tomorrow, the topic is the standard American woman. <laughs> You'll like it, I promise. Hope you have a good Wednesday. If you have any questions, feel free to IM me. And um, if you have any Christmas songs or for Alyssa out there, Ma Member of the Tribe songs, Hanukkah songs, any other thing you celebrate, let me know. Because when I do searches, all that I hear and come up with are like covers of the same songs. Like Britney Spears does covers, The Eagles, Lance Bass. So send me names and I'll gladly, there's a hippopotamus song apparently. Anyway, I have to do 31 days of wellness. I need 31 songs. I think I have like six days done so far. So you have good well good Christmas songs, let me know. Or sorry, Hanukkah, holiday, any songs, let me know. All right, have a good day. Bye guys.